Yes, everybody, and welcome back to another Daily Drop brought to you by Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. Join me as, as he always does. It's our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here for a Carolina basketball related drop for this specific one. And we're going to be kind of posing a question to you guys. And I'm going to be posing a question to you that we're just going to organically kind of talk about. And in this one, we're going to be talking about are there any correlations between Gigi Jackson and Simeon Wilcher? Just, so just to provide a little background on it, Gigi Jackson, a guy that was a really originally committed to Carolina's 2023 class, ended up reclassifying to 2022 and deep committing to North Carolina and ending up at South Carolina last year, a program that doesn't have a great history of basketball and really struggled last year. And Gigi was a guy that struggled a little bit as well. Ultimately ended up in the draft process uh, this season. And Simeon Wilcher, a guy that was committed to Carolina's 2023 class, ended up decommitting with the reclassification of Elliot Cadeau and just committed recently to Rick Pitino in St. John. So, AJ is a guy that obviously was right in the thick of covering these two recruitments over the past few years and having a ton of conversations with David Sisk about what's going on behind the scenes. Do you see any correlations between a guy like Gigi and a, and a guy like Simeon Wilshire? No, and it doesn't begin just with the fact that one guy reclassed and the other guy was in his regular class. I, I just think that um, Gigi's situation was bad advice from some people. Uh, his father and yeah. high school coach wanted him to not reclass because he said he had some maturing to do, not so much basketball maturing, but just maturing to do. And I think South Carolina fans saw that this past season. In, in the case of Simeon, Simeon was on board. He was an early committee, he committed in October of his junior year in high school. So he was he was on board. He went to his prom a few weeks ago and wore Carolina Blue Jordans to win a tux. I guess that's the new thing. I Saw a few other some friends whose kids with the proms and they're wearing sneakers. It's big, man. Probably. It's 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 different. Definitely, it's a, that's it's kind a of different day, do, man. Yeah. It's a mm-hmm. different day. So, yeah. but he that's what he wore. And David talked to his dad after Elliot reclassified, and his dad said everything was fine. But ultimately, the reality is is that his time on the court, time on the ball was automatically would diminish with Elliot Cadeau being there. You don't bring Elliot Cadeau to come off the bench and play eight minutes a game. He's going to start. The Wilters understood that. So he made strictly a basketball decision. And it, it was good for him, I guess, that Rick Patino had taken over St. John's. So there was an optimistic local situation to get into there at mm-hmm. St. John's. And I say optimistic. St. John's has been crap for a while. And Patino, though, wherever he goes, he wins. Mm-hmm. He's he's a he's a great coach. Say what you will about the other stuff, that doesn't matter. S- Simeon Wilcher's going there to to win and play for a guy that has won at every level and turned out a lot of outstanding players. So he made his decision that was best for him. So the situations are different. Gigi's decision was driven by bad advice and the need to get some cash. Now yeah. Simeon's was driven by the fact that he wants to play and be on the ball because that's what he sees his future as is being on the ball. So I don't see any real similarities other than the fact that a lot of fans, how they've reacted with accusations of tampering with the vitriol toward both kids and a lot of criticism of Hoover for not being able to keep, you know, he, he loses a kid in the summer for two straight years. I get all that, but, and we could hash that out here now if you want, but yeah, as far as the specific motivation behind the two moves now, there's no similarities. No, I, I agree. I think if we were, you know, if Cadeau ended up reclassifying and maybe going to a different program, then comparing that to Gigi is incredibly similar. In, but in a I lot still of think the motivation would have been different behind why yeah. that happened. Yeah, it would have just been similar as to why G- Gigi's was like clearly lost. get mm-hmm. some cash, get in there now, listen to the people with bad advice. And there was somebody in his camp that was just too influential and nobody wanted to. Uh, yeah, to, to 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 voice their opinions a little bit stronger, I guess it happens, man, and and it's just the 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 new world of college, you know, hoops we kind of live in in college sports as a whole. And I want to hit on it, go in in depth a little bit bit further on it because to me it's. It's it's very interesting, you know, the Gigi situation. And I've joked with some people behind the scenes that it's almost like the, the Carolina in the last couple years is is kind of been 
had unfortunate luck with reclassifying and had good luck with reclassifying in a lot of ways. And it, it both kind of ties in because you talk about Gigi's situation. You love to have Gigi coming in this year. That would just been great for Carolina, especially when you look at kind of maybe the lack of depth down low. If you could bring a guy like Gigi in this year, like he was supposed to be, I think Carolina takes that. He ended up, like you said, we talked about it. He ends up wanting to reclassify for whatever reason. And in hindsight, I think everybody can say maybe it wasn't the best decision that he's made, but who knows what will end up happening with his, you know, NBA stuff. And maybe we'll look back in a couple of years and be like, you know, he's, you know, in the NBA shining and it all worked out fine. And then you fast forward the Cado situation this year, AJ, where every Carolina fan is just, oh, we have to have Cado. We have to get him now. He has to come in. Who cares? We need Cado. It doesn't matter what, what happens. And we talked at length about how, it, it, you know, Carolina needs to win now. So bringing in a guy like Cadeau Hen, who probably improves your starting, uh, you know, five and probably improves your team as a whole is, is probably a plus, especially for a program, like I said, that needs to win now and forget 2024. They need to win this coming year in 23, 24, forget about 24, 25. So makes sense. Yeah. But we talked about at length, how it's not as black and white as Cadeau just comes in Carolina. It, you're shaking the tree. There's too many cooks in the kitchen. As David said, you were always going to lose somebody and then they lose Wiltshire to whatever situation went on with that wants to play on the ball more. I don't necessarily think there was any tampering involved. I think that's just people saying, Oh, Rick Patino did this a few years ago. So he was obviously tampering now. No, Wiltshire wanted to be on the ball and wanted to play a lot more than he would have played at Carolina this coming year. So you completely understand when a guy like Cadeau comes in in his same position that a guy like him ends up leaving. It makes complete sense to me. So in a lot of ways, Carolina of the last couple of years is kind of, it's been interesting to see their relationship with these reclassifications. And when you're a program like Carolina who recruits these top, top kids, I think this is the trend we're going to continue to see AJ. Cause I don't think we're going to see kids yeah. wanting to, you know, stop reclassifying anytime soon. I think this is something Carolina is going to have to continue to deal with. And it's always going to, I think divide fans a little bit because hey, you might get somebody a little bit earlier, but in doing so, you're probably going to lose somebody as well. So it's going to be a lot of give and take, I think. And I think Carolina fans just have to get used to it. <laughs> Well, we live in a time where being a part of something isn't as special as it used to be. And yeah. it's being fostered everywhere you look. That's, And I'm not making accusations here about to anybody. I'm not. I'm just kind of outlying sort of what you're no, saying. That's a fact. This is going to continue right. happening. But we're living in a very narcissistic time. Everybody's got to go take a picture of what they're having for dinner and post it in every medium that they could find. And, hey, look at me as I, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge is in the background, that kind of stuff. It's just the times that we live in and everybody has become more individualized. You don't have to go out and interact as much because you can stay home and interact with one of these and you feel like you're getting the same thing out of it. So the greater good of a bigger purpose and, and, and a purpose of more than one isn't as much the mission for a lot of people. So these, these, these decisions are a lot easier for kids to make. And I also think the way that the current players have responded two guys moving on. It's like, yeah, okay. Like they, I think there are times when they're a little upset, but they also understand because every one of them thought about it. And Armando even admitted he thought about leaving at one point. So you've got to think about yourself. I get that. And I do think a lot of kids don't value the, the importance and benefit, the long-term benefit of maybe sticking with something, but that's just the way things are. And, yeah. and, it's going to happen more and more. You're right. But, uh, but you have to, as a program, you have to plan for it. You have to prepare for it. I, I do think that that's why you bring in kids from the portal. Some of the ones that, that Hubert brought in, people are like, well, why would he bring in that guy? Well, you don't know what the freshman are going to do, Yeah. but you know, that when a guy's leaving a school and comes in the portal, the odds are really good. They're going to stick with you and they're at least going to give you a year. So now you just have to build from year to year, which is why they went ahead and made that, understanding would probably be a swap Cadeau for Wilcher um, for the 23, 24 season. Cause it's all about this season. Dean used to build down the road. Roy used to build down the road. Roy would give a freshman eight minutes in a game, knowing that when his sophomore, his junior year, that would pay off. Mm -hmm. I don't think things are that way now. And maybe Hubert sees the world through a different lens. Cause he kind of coached every game to win that game. That's why he didn't play the bench a whole lot. It's yeah. a diff this is a different North Carolina in every conceivable fashion. The uniforms look the same. They play in the Dean Dome. The fight song's what it is. Ramsey's is running around in a tank top everywhere. But so many things are so different now. And fans just kind of have to get used to it. And I think as they do, there won't be the vitriol toward the Wilchers and Gigi Jacksons down the road because it'll become commonplace. It's going to happen a lot. And yeah. who knows? They have a couple of commits for next year's class. Who knows if they even show up? 
Yeah. And I'm not planting a seed there. I'm just saying in broad terms. Oh, no, and you're not lying. I mean, it's just a fact. I mean, just look at the history of Carolina over the last two years with guys that were committed for a long time and or, you know, end up not coming or reclassifying or deciding they want to do this. It, again, it, it's just the landscape we live in. And I, I do agree. I think I think it even applies to a program like Carolina more because they are one of these blue bloods. There are these they are the program, along with a few other Duke you know, Kansas, Kentucky's that are going out and getting these top players every year. And the top players are usually the ones that want to reclassify. You know what I mean? It, it makes a little bit more sense when you're one yeah. of the best. You want to maybe get to the league a little bit quicker. So you reclassify. So I think Carolina fans just need to understand it comes with the territory of being a big time program like North Carolina is. But again, like you said too, Carolina needs to win now. Hubert can't plan why, well, you know, you know, I need to do this. No, like, Hubert and UNC needs to win next season, not 2025. Yeah. You know, it, it is a little bit more, you know, immediacy with how Carolina struggled over the past few years and some of the inconsistencies. And I know yeah. Carolina fans feel the same way. They want the program to win now. So I think they need to understand some of the give and take that might come along with that for lack of a better word. So, yeah. yeah so uh, that's why these are, di- these are dissimilar situations because GGs was pulled on the other end mm-hmm. Simeon's it wasn't like he was forced out or anything like that, but they had to make a decision that was best for them. Mm -hmm. And then he had to make a decision that was best for him. And that's how it played out. So that's why they're so dissimilar. Yeah. And um, and I I think, and I think Simeon will have a good year at St. John's. It's a good place for him to go. Mm -hmm. You you can't beat playing for Patino. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a great situation. He gets now gets to be a local guy. He's from that area. So if, if St. John's returns, and he's a big part of that, man. He's going to be legendary up there. So there's nothing wrong with that. No, I think it's a, in terms of a place for Simeon to go after, you know, getting away from Carolina, I think it makes total sense. And I know a lot of Carol, Carolina fans don't want to hear that because, oh, you know, we lost him and he went to play under a guy like Rick Patino, who a lot of Carolina fans hate for a lot of different reasons. But I think when you think about it and kind of step back, take your fandom out of it, it makes a lot of sense what Simeon did. And he wants to play now and wants to be on the ball now. And I think he'll have an opportunity to do that, at least in a heck of a lot of a, a yeah. heck of a lot better of an opportunity than he would have had in Chapel Hill next season. Put it that way. And I could assure this one thing: if Simeon's not getting enough shots, he's not going to just walk out of the walk away from a timeout <laughs> huddle. He's going to pay attention to Rick in the huddle. So, yeah, exactly, man. A, a different, you know, a different situations completely. And we'll we'll, we'll wrap it yeah. up with that. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Another daily drop brought to you by TarHillIllustrated.com. Make sure you it, keep it locked to TarHillIllustrated.com and our social media channels at, as well on Twitter at Hill Illustrated and Facebook at Tar Hill Illustrated. Go check us out. Go give us a follow. Go drop some likes over there if you want to stay tuned and stay a little bit more up to date with what we do on a daily basis. Again, I'm Jacob Turner. He's Andrew Jones. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.